Hi, um, I'm Bernadette Casey. I'm one of the founders of The Formery, which is a textile research company just down in the ter on the terrace. And um, Barbara um, Wheeler is our artist in residence. And um, our work is based around end of life textiles and the vast amounts of textile waste and how we can um, repurpose it and reuse it and slow down our, our clothing consumption because at the moment um, clothing consumptions hit 100 billion units a year and um, when you think about one single t-shirt it takes about three years worth of someone's drinking water to create one t-shirt. Mm. You realise the massive impacts our clothing industry has on the world and if we keep on its current trajectory within 20 years we'll be using over a quarter of the carbon budget associated with that two degree global warming that we want to stay under. So it has really real physical and um, environmental impacts, it's really serious environmental impacts. So um, one of the things we're trying to do is slow down our consumption by reconnecting with our clothes. So the meaning of them, the craftsmanship, the craftswomanship of our clothes. And Barbara's work um, directly connects our clothing system with the environment using natural fibres, using botanicals to dye and to print her clothes. And um, she took me out foraging last weekend and it completely changed the way I, view, I viewed the environment. And I walk down from work every day, I live in Northland, I come down through the gardens every day and my, my walk to work is getting slower, <laughs> thanks to my education. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'd like to introduce you to Barbara. Thanks Bernadette. Um, so we're going to take about 20 minutes today and what I want to do is to just show you some of the garments that I make, um, show you some of the experiments that I've done from um, leaves from the gardens and then we've got an interactive um, exercise because this is the education centre um, and because I'm a mad string maker I thought we might, I'd teach you how to make string from the flax that grows just out there if you're interested. So the short version is going to be 20 minutes. The longer version can be as long as you've got to make string. How long is string? Mm -hmm. OK, so um, Claire, thank you so much for allowing me to um, forage through the camellia dell. And my first experiments um, in camellia, um, using camellias, because that's the, I came to New Zealand to use camellias. I didn't know at the time that I was going to be here during the 125th anniversary of women's suffrage in New Zealand and I see that there's a camellia planted to Kate Shepherd down in the camellia walk. Mm -hmm. um, I walked straight past it thinking oh I don't like white. In the last week I've realised the significance of a white camellia and a red camellia. Um, I'm happy to be working with the pinks which is a blend, the middle path as we say. Um, I didn't get great results and it's because what I was doing was picking up um, le uh, blo blooms from the ground. So I've got some different results from um, other uh, camellias that I have been gifted. And so I just wanted to show you, this is your camellias on my silk, and this is the camellia straight off the bush. So you can see there's a little bit of difference in the freshness of the bloom. <coughs> but I think I've gone straight into talking about what I'm doing with your blooms rather than talk about my practice. So my practice, as a 60 year old, I'm an emerging artist. I've had many careers, like most of us, we have many. Um, I am a sustainability advocate, but I'm also a clothing designer and have been all of my life. And so I'm combining both of those practices now to talk to people about where their clothes come from and what's good about wearing natural fibres, how it's good for your body, how it's good for the planet. And, how you, and, and demonstrating how you can get colours. Um, it's not new. This predates the Industrial Revolution. It predates lots of you know, eras. People have been gaining colour from plants for a long, long time. What I do is I make things that are really nice to wear and I take them to markets and I sell them through my business and I offer them to people. Just try it on. 
I'm using my practice to beguile people and to encourage them. To, once they put something like this on, they love it. And then they start thinking about the rest of their wardrobe. Let me just take you through what I've done this week. Um, this was my first, the first thing I printed when I got here. And I, it has, it's just wool and Pahuta Kala leaves off the footpath out there. Went home, printed it. Um, to me, it's pretty uninspiring, but most of the people that I've spoken to who love Pahuta Kala just go mad. So I realised that um, I'd struck a chord with people here. And so I went home um, and started to make, I had done some research at Te Papa and I'd realised that um, the Maori weavings use um, a process of tannin from tree bark and iron from minerals in mud. And I just looked in my kitchen and I realised I had tea bags and I had some ferrous sulphate with me because it's a mordant for natural dyes and I thought, I can do, I can replicate, I can do a contemporary replication of a Maori dye to get black. And so I've made this, which is called Black Petal. And that's the first garment that I made. A um, little bit frustrated about the pinks, as I was saying earlier on, so I just changed it up and said, OK, well, what can I do? I know I can do black. And I just kept dyeing it until it got to the right colour of black that I wanted. More tea bags, more ferrous, more tea bags, more ferrous. So we're at the right stage with that. This is um, that silk. This is in, in production, so that's what it starts. That's all my garments start from, from nothing. Um, no dye is what I'm saying. Um, I've moved on to print silk. That's, that's a different kind of silk. I've printed this. This is Pahutakawa leaves, and that will go on the bottom of this dress. So that's a black, black top and a flower bottom. This one is something that I did late yesterday, which is called White Belly Black Snake. This is a combination of um, stories about country. So White Belly Black Snake is a reference to um, the bush dyes in the Kimberley. Um, and they, uh, they often dye scarves this way. And it will either be a White Belly Black Snake, which means the, the, the shibori resist has been in the middle of the fabric, or it'll be a black belly white snake, which means that it's the opposite. So this is, again, the, the, my interpretation of the Maori black dye. So it's a combination of stories about country in this garment. And this is a zero waste design. The, the waste here, the shaping here, has gone into the pockets. This is just an, a, a rectangle. Oh, it's a tube, actually. Um, Couple of quick, a couple of quick others. Um, these are garments, these are also zero waste. This is a linen that I've dyed in Canberra using oak leaves, and I've done a shibori folded resist on that. So it's dyed with oak leaves, and then I've added iron, folded it, and then dyed it again, and that's the black over the brown. Um, and this is just the leaves on linen, and this is another, this, these are just rectangles that I've mucked around with. So this is a jacket or a, or a shirt, and that's just the leaves. And I'm resisting cutting off all the loose ends. That's, it's, it's, a, it's an exercise in letting go. Letting go of neatness and letting go of being perfect. Uh, this is a personal garment. I brought this along just to show you some of the leaves from my backyard in Canberra. So this is Eucalyptus manifera. I um, don't think you've got this in the gardens. I did have a pretty good look and couldn't find any. Um, but I've printed that onto wool and then I've over dyed it with indigo. So you can see on wool, the leaf prints are almost a photographic representation because they're pushed up really hard and close with the fibre, rolled and then cooked. It becomes, the, the steam transfers the leaf print into the fabric. So you get a, that's what we call a botanical print. Um, over here is something that I've made to wear to an, um, an event here in, in um, Wellington. This is all my workshop waste. So this wool here is this wool. And when I make garments um, and there's waste on the floor, you know when you cut things and you trim things and you get things right. Um, so I broom it up every day and pop it into a box and then I figure out what I'm going to do with it. And there was so much of the wool from making long-sleeved shirts this year that I decided I'd make a jacket. 
and it needs to be pink. It just needs to be pink. And I've just got to get the right pink. Uh oh, I've left a pin in. Jesus. Um, thank you. I need a dresser. <laughs> so I'll wear this. I'll wear this out next Friday night. <laughs> um, but I think rosebuds need to be pink, don't you? Um, and that's really, that's my practice. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to, for this to be more like a Q&A. So is there any questions about what I do and why I do it? Can you please explain a bit more about the leaf print and the sure. steam process yeah, or how yeah. you make it? Um, if I... Okay, imagine that we've got a rod. I use a broom handle, or actually I cut up tent poles. Um, and you get your leaves and you get your fabric. You lay your fabric down, put your leaves all along it, and then roll it tight as you can. And then I use um, very thick string and you wind it as tight as you can tie it up and then boil it for an hour. Even on wool, it won't shrink it. Silk, it won't shrink it because what's happening is the fibres that seem to be protected because of the tension and it's the steam that forces the tannins in the leaves into the fabric. And with eucalypts, it's a substantive print. Um, oak, oak is substantive. So there are categories of dyes. There are permanent dyes and there's five natural permanent dyes in the world. One's indigo, madder, weld, I think it's kutch and maybe cochineal. Um, the eucalypts are substantive dyes, which means that in your lifetime it'll probably still be there, but it will gradually fade. And some of the floral prints, like the camellia, I'm expecting will fade fairly, fairly quickly. Um, this, for example, is permanent. I'm pretty sure this is permanent. You know, this is a substantive print from the leaves. Because I've used iron, now iron's a mordant, and mordants bite the fabric so that the colours go into the fibres, right into the fibres, and stay there. So when you say you boil it for an hour, you're actually putting the garment in the water or you're steaming it above? You do either. If you put it into the dye pot, whatever's in the dye pot, and that means whatever leaches out of your bundle, or if you put leaves into the dye pot to give it a colour, it will. That's what you give it back. Colour. That's what this is because they're the string marks, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If you steam it, you don't get those. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Can you show us that one? Little bat bed. This one. Yeah. Ah. Um. Remember I said the uh, white belly black snake was a combination of stories of country? I did a workshop with the bush dyers from um, the Kimberley last year and they brought with them mangrove. Did you guys have mangroves here in New Zealand? Yeah, we know, yeah. but we don't so when there's a big storm, what happens is they go out and they collect the broken bits. And this is mangrove um, on silk. And what I did was I just, I did the really technical process, <laughs> tied it, popped it in the dye pot, and left it for a week. And what happens is the heat, the diurnal temperature changes, means that you get up and down and a bit of drying. And so there's, these are different colours that mm -hmm. I got as the dye aged over the week of having it in does that include the apricot colour? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it was white originally? White, yeah. 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 I brought this with me, um, probably to have this conversation, even though I didn't know it, but I brought it with me thinking that I would be inspired by what I've seen here and I would cut, finally have the courage to cut this and make it into something, and I'm pretty sure I'm there. 